Good afternoon, everyone. This is Tina. How are you doing today? Um, I was thinking about uh, the OIM, which is uh, the one I choose is a Hibernate. Um, but I feel it's more makes sense to using Hibernate with a spring. So I have to introduce the spring call. And the first thing in my mind of a spring call is the LC container. So uh, I'm gonna talk about uh, LC uh, in this video, and then I'm gonna have another video talk about dependency injection because it's otherwise it's gonna be a little bit long in one videos. Okay, so let's talk about LC in this video. Probably it's a little bit different from what you are thinking about it. Okay. So LC, what it is, okay, it means inversion of control, right? Inversion of control. Uh, in spring, LC and uh, dependency injection, they kind of like uh, used interchangeable, which means LC equals dependency injection. But actually, LC is uh, not equal to dependency injection. Dependency injection is uh, one form of the IOC. Okay, that's why I want to separate them. Uh, IOC, uh, which means the control flow of the program is the inverted. What it means? What does it mean? It means as a programmer, we don't control the flow of the application. Instead, the external resource like the framework, like the container, like the service or components, other resources will control the flow of the application. Uh, let me give you uh, two examples. Okay, The first example is a Tomcat container. Um, when we first learned Java-based web application, probably you learned about uh, the servlets and the GSP, right? So when we deploy our application, we have to have a container, either Tomcat, Glassfish, WebLogic, or others, okay? You must have a container. And suppose we have a Tomcat container here, which is a Tomcat. In our Tomcat, probably you have what? You have the servlets, right? We have uh, two servlets here, and probably you have the filter, right? Filter, and you might have the listener, okay? Those resides in your Tomcat, the container. And when we have a, a, a client using the browser to access, suppose access the servlet A, okay? Um, so, we, we, are, we already know, okay, we already know this, this uh, request will be handled by the servlet A to get a request, to get method, right? Then you have the response comes back, okay, just play the page. And uh, when we create or wrote the program for our application deployed in the Tomcat, is there any place you create the instance of the A? No. Uh, for the filter, no. B, uh, instance of the B, no. We, as a programmer, we don't initialize servlets, filter, listeners. And we also don't do the uh, initialization or destroy all the things on the servlets, filter, and listener. So who takes care of that? It's a container. Tomcat container, okay? And we also know in the servlet, we have do get, do post, other do methods, right? As a programmer, is there any place you actually call do get, do post those methods? No, right? We didn't have any other place. We don't have a place. Actually, we, uh, as a programmer, we directly call dot do get, do post. No. Who call that? It's Tomcat. It's a container. So as you can see, the entire flow of this scenario, when a user make a request, entire flow is not controlled by programmer. It's controlled by the Tomcat container. So in this case, you can, you can think as a Tomcat as an IOC container in version of control. 
because this container controls the entire flow of our servlet application, right? Servlet app. It creates the servlet instance, filter instance, listener instance for us. It is called the init method. It will call do get to post destroy method for us. So this is one kind. Let me give you another kind, which is uh, let using some one called chatting. Let's talk about uh, the chatting in a traditional way, okay, or legacy way, which is not a good. Uh, suppose you have a program, okay, and after the user send the message, you wrote the program here. In your program, you will check here has a looping here, message received. And uh, if received, yes, then you're gonna, what? Display message. Yeah, sorry. And after display, then user can continue, okay? Continue uh, chatting. Uh, or, or, or probably just go here, okay? Continue, do like this, right? Continue, chatting, send a message. And uh, if, it doesn't receive, not received. Keep waiting here. Keep waiting. So when you examine the flow, it's a sequential, which means the programmer control the flow. The programmer, uh, after you send a message, the programmer will say, okay, I'm gonna keep waiting here, okay, waiting. The user who use our program cannot do anything else, okay, he must wait. And once the message comes received, then you're gonna display the message. Then you continue. But where are we waiting for this part? As a user, you cannot do anything else. You have to wait. So the programmer control the entire flow, how this chatting works, right? There's another case, which is like this way. Send message, okay? And here, and here here as a user while using your application user can do other tasks uh, the other tasks okay and this part message received message received display okay display who will call this one it's by an event from external from other from external resource you have an event filed okay so the event is message received okay and once the message received you display the message the program display a message but uh, there's no waiting the program doesn't control the flow doesn't control when to display the message right it's an event it controls when the message is received and when to display the message. And for the entire flow, the user can do other tasks. Okay, so it's different from the first scenario we see, which is a programmer. Probably here you have a for loop here or have a while loop here. You control the entire flow. But in this case, it's an event, okay? Control the flow of your application. So actually, I'll see. It's not the not. It's different from um, the dependency injection. Okay, IOC is more broad. IOC can be implemented by using event. Okay, like we see here, the entire flow of the program is controlled not by the programmer. It's controlled by other external resource. Um, in this case, like I think the Tomcat, the, the container, okay, or web container. Um, let me using web container probably, because other container can do the same thing, okay. Uh, event web container can also is an implementation of IOC. Uh, some people probably using a template design pattern. They think a template design pattern is also the IOC because. The flow is defined in the parent class, but the actual implementation is in the subclassing. Some people using the service locator, okay, it also can think of. And the most popular one in the IOC is dependency injection.
which is actually the thing inside the spring. Okay, so spring using LC dependent injection interchangeable, but LC actually is a, has a more broad picture than the dependent injection. Dependency injection is a one form of LC. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna just talk about the LC, which is uh, the flow, the control flow of the entire program is not controlled by the programmer. It's controlled by other resource. Okay. Uh, uh, I thank you for watching this video, and um, uh, I'm gonna have another video about the dependency injection. I hope you can watch both of them uh, together because uh, otherwise, probably you you lose some part of the IOC and dependency injection. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.